plane crashes outside Pretoria with 19 people on board. Confirmation of one fatality and multiple injuries this evening will go live to the scene. ESCOM and unions still haven't been able to reach a wage agreement during the fourth round of talks. This is E! News at 8, live from Johannesburg. I'm Sally Burdett. Good evening. A charter plane crash in Pretoria leads our bulletin tonight. 19 people, including crew, on board. Now, the plane which took off from Vonneboom Airport in Pretoria developed engine trouble, we understand, and hit a factory before crashing in a field. One person confirmed dead, at least 18 injured. We cross now to our reporter who's at the scene or just close to the scene of the accident. That's Nicholas Bauer tonight. Good evening, Nicholas. What can you tell us about the fatality? Do we know anything about the person who died? At this stage, Sally, unfortunately, details remaining sketchy. Emergency services have confirmed that there is one fatality among those 19 people that were on board that ZS340 BVR uh, uh, aircraft that went down shortly after takeoff from the Vonderboom Airport. Emergency medical services have now left the scene, and all that is on site now is the Civil Aviation Authority, who are now going to try and piece together the facts and find out exactly the circumstances behind this aircraft crash. Just to give you a little bit more details on the actual incident, the plane went down, did hit a factory, and it wasn't only the 19 passengers on board that were uh, injured or the, or, and uh, the uh, one deceased on board as well. It was two um, uh, members of the public that were in the factory when the plane crashed into it. One of them has been severely injured, being left uh, maimed, losing a limb in the process. Uh, and at this stage, we know uh, that uh, the uh, body has now been removed and all those that have been affected, those that were on board and also those two individuals in the factory have been taken to uh, nearby hospitals to be treated for their injuries. Sally. Right, so the engineer who was trapped in the wreckage has been freed. Can you confirm you did say that the person who died was someone on board? Indeed, Sally, that's all the information that we have at this stage. Whether or not it was a member of the crew or indeed the passengers that were on board among those 19 souls that took off from the nearby water, uh, by the, from the nearby Vonderboom Air Force Base remains unclear at this stage. Uh, from the information that we could piece together on the ground, though, emergency services mm -hmm. uh, are saying uh, nothing more than really uh, just the numbers of uh, people that were on board, but there was an indication that, uh, right. they, uh, that there were four uh, people that were trapped, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, there was, of course, also the engineer uh, that was trapped in the cockpit, that they, but they were indeed freed. Thank you so much. That's Nicholas Bauer from Pretoria confirming their one person dead in that Vonneboom plane crash. 19 people were on board, one of those died, two people on the ground injured. Let's move on now. ESCOM and Labour unions remained at the negotiating table until just a little earlier this evening. Talks have hit a snag. The power utility isn't backing down from its 7% offer for the year, while unions still demanding 9%. One of the unions has also rejected a facilitator from the Public Enterprises Department. Slindela Masikana has been covering the negotiations in Woodmead, Johannesburg. The power utility has uh, put an offer on the table of 7% for 2018, 6.5% for 2019, as well as 6.25% for the third year. Now, the issue around housing allowances, the uh, power utility has now taken uh, that offer uh, of um, uh, offering um, housing allowances based on CPI. That offer has been taken off the table. The power utility says that uh, that money is now going into these new uh, offers uh, for, for wages. Now, on the matter of bonuses, that's also quite a contentious one as the power utility maintains that uh, it's waiting for its audited financial statements to be signed off. And once those are signed off, then a, they can convene a, convene a forum where, uh, nego uh, where bonuses will be discussed. Now, for the unions, they maintain that uh, with regards to bonuses, though that issue uh, uh, lies within performance. That is how bonuses are determined.
to Durban now. Detectives are analyzing footage which could lead to a breakthrough in the explosive or suspicious devices, six of them found around the city in the last five days. Police Minister Becky Tkele says the incidents could be linked. Our reporter Desen Thathia was in Wentworth today where the latest bomb scare was reported on Monday. A young boy apparently walked into the supermarket on Monday afternoon with a note and a bullet. It's understood the items were given to him by a stranger to be handed to the manager. There was a demand for money, else there would be a, a bomb that would be detonated in the store. Police were called in, they did a search, they had their dogs out here as well. And during this time, all of the staff were evacuated. Initially, a national police spokesperson told ENCA it was a false alarm. But this video footage, confirmed by witnesses, shows the controlled detonation of an explosive outside the store. And a report from the local police station confirms a device was removed. This brings to six the number of suspicious devices found across the city in just five days. Despite this, the police minister says the public has no reason to feel unsafe. The footage we are studying, we are studying in, I think, about from three uh, areas where these things have happened, is giving us a big hope that will crack the matter. Fele says there could be a link between the incidents, although opportunism may be a factor too. It looks like because somebody has started this thing, they are taking a ride on its propaganda. But on the ground, there's anxiety. Yeah, the people are very shaken up, eh? They're very shaken up about this, because this is the first time this has ever happened here in Winter. Three devices, two of which caused small fires, were found at the popular pavilion and gateway malls. Representatives of both malls say they are working closely with authorities to keep patrons safe. Desantathia, Durban. Deputy National Director of Public Prosecutions, Nom Ngobo Jiba, feels vindicated after a court ruled in her favor today. The Supreme Court of Appeal overturned a court judgment that struck her from the role of advocates. Jiba had come under fire for not prosecuting disgraced former crime intelligence head Richard Mdluli. A judge had also found her to be dishonest. Jiba was placed on special leave two years ago and was barred from entering NPA offices pending her appeal. Well, today's judgment could now pave the way for her return to the NPA. Democracy did not come easily to South Africa, and that's the message from friends and family of Solomon Matlangu, who was executed by the apartheid government when he was just 22. The freedom fighter would have been 62 years old this week. In his honor, a new tombstone was unveiled today. Kailishle Kumalo reports. A martyr of South Africa's struggle for liberation, remembered in a special way. He gave his life to realize the ideal of freedom. Even as he took his last step before he was hanged, at the infamous Pretoria Central Prison, Solomon Matlango made these remarks, my blood will nourish the tree that will bear the fruits of freedom. Tell my people I love them, they must continue to fight. On Tuesday, his peers and comrades came to unveil his revamped tombstone. He was reburied here in 1993, following his execution in 1979. It's a great feeling, it's a warm feeling to see uh, his fellow comrades also coming together with the family uh, to ensure that his legacy remains in the minds of all South Africans. The generation of today of young people must reclaim, you know, uh, that spirit of militancy, that spirit of fortitude, that spirit that says whatever it is that we need as young people today, it's something that we are going to pursue and we are going to pursue with vigor up until we achieve it. Matlang was charged with two counts of murder and a number of charges under the Terrorism Act. Although the judge found he was not directly responsible for the murders, he ordered that he be hanged. He was facing the hangman's news, did not even bother about his own life. But he was concerned about us who were remaining, how we were going to respond, uh, that we should uh, actually draw courage to revenge his execution. But not only that, that uh, our people must be mobilized to make sure that uh, we 
do at the end bring an end to the domination of one by another in this country. Matlango's story serves as a reminder that South Africa's freedom is owed to people who paid the ultimate sacrifice. Kailisle Kumalo Mamelodi. Still ahead on E! News, despite the odds and rising floodwaters, the rescue operation in Thailand has ended successfully. To Pretoria and the 100 men march today called for action against gender-based violence. Minister Batibile Dlamini, who also attended the march, has described the wave of ongoing attacks as a crime against humanity. Controversial music boss Arthur Mafokate, who's charged with assaulting his ex-girlfriend, decided not to attend today's march. This after activists criticized his planned involvement. Malon Boy reports. They marched down the streets of the capital, heading to the union buildings. Hundreds of men taking a stand against gender-based violence. As a man, do you have conversations with other men about the, the gender-based violence? Do you have conversations about them? Yes, in the Department of Justice and Coastal Development, we do have those conversations as a man so that we can encourage each other to respect and to love our women and our so, and our children as women are always important. As you see what I wrote here, we see women as something to nature, not something to, camp, to conquer. Then it was time for prayers. We pray for the women and girls who are victims of violence. There were strong words from cabinet ministers and other speakers. Say no to violence against women. Say no. Say no. Violence against women is a crime against humanity. When a abused woman comes to the police station, don't tell her to go back and negotiate. You go and arrest the perpetrator. No means no. And then they took the pledge. I pledge to help break the culture of silence. Critics say the I event pledge. was just a show not to pay to lip violence. service to change. We did not march with you because we continuously tried to pacify us and have symbolic branches of government such as Ministry of Women that blame victims for the situations that they are in or were in. Malunke Lopui, Pretoria. To international news, and did science or a miracle save the day? That's the question Thai Navy SEALs are asking about the remarkable rescue of 13 people who were trapped in a flooded cave. Twelve junior soccer players and their coach have now all been brought safely out of the cave network. Tragically, of course, one diver lost his life in the operation. A successful end to a dangerous mission. It began on the 23rd of June. Twelve members of the Wild Boars junior soccer team and their coach decided to explore the Tam Luang cave system after practice. Heavy rains flooded the tunnels, leaving them trapped for more than two weeks. It's believed that their 25-year-old coach, an orphan and former monk, helped the boys survive the ordeal by teaching them how to meditate and conserve their energy. A team made up of the world's top divers and Thailand Navy SEALs brought them safely to the surface in just three days. The success of this mission came from good cooperation from everyone and all agencies, both Thai and foreign. I thank them on behalf of Thailand for everything. Well wishes like these messages of hope from Thai school children also helped the cause. The group are now recovering in hospital and are on a special diet. Some have even asked for chocolate bread for breakfast. They are being kept in quarantine to avoid risk of infection, but are able to see their parents through a glass window. Let's recap your top story. A plane crashes outside Pretoria with 19 people on board. Confirmation of one fatality and multiple injuries, including to two people on the ground.
Well, we've had some lovely rain across Johannesburg tonight. After the break, we find out what's happening weather-wise across the country. And then the France versus Belgium match is on right now. But we bring you a parrot predicting the outcome of tonight's World Cup semi-final. Good evening, everyone. There were a few more showers today over parts of central and eastern South Africa. And while the showers will be dissipating overnight, the cloud cover hangs around and it stays partly cloudy across the high felt as we head into Wednesday afternoon. It is going to be a warmer day over the central interior of the country. That does include Gauteng, while in the west, windy weather will be developing ahead of the approaching cold front that will make landfall only on Thursday. Let's look at your city forecast for Wednesday and it's going to be a mostly sunny and mild day in the Northern Cape, but it does become windy for many areas in the afternoon. And those strong winds will extend into the Karoo areas of the Western Cape. Fresh winds also developing for the peninsula, but it's still going to be a warm day for Cape Town, reaching 23 degrees. Berg winds persisting for the coastal parts of the Eastern Cape. Temperatures climbing above 25 degrees Celsius for many parts of the province. And it's going to be a lovely day into KwaZulu-Natal with very little cloud cover, warm for most areas, and temperatures getting into the mid-20s in the northern interior. For Mpumalanga, it's going to be a partly cloudy afternoon. Bombella gets to 23, but a hot day for Skukuza at 28. And temperatures will also be higher into Limpopo under partly cloudy skies, but it does look as though it stays dry over the region. In the northwest, you can expect maximums above the 20 degree mark for a change. Partly cloudy weather for this area as well. And lots of cloud will bubble up over the free states in the afternoon, but it does stay dry and it will be milder than it has been for a while. And the good news for Gauteng is that it's also going to be the warmest day you've seen for at least the last week or so. Lots of cloud developing over the province, but no rain over the area either. Let's look ahead to Thursday when that strong front makes landfall in the west. It's going to be a cold and wet day for Cape Town, while in KwaZulu-Natal the sun will be out and temperatures get into the mid to upper 20s. By Friday, the cold front will be moving further inland, and along with that there could be snowfalls over the high ground of the western and northern Cape. And finally, a parrot with a reputation for intelligence and a love of football has predicted that France will beat Belgium in tonight's World Cup semi-final. Newton is one of several animal clairvoyants trained to knock a ball around a cardboard soccer pitch. The team whose goal he scores in is predicted to be the winner. Now, Newton has correctly forecast three out of four quarterfinal results. We'll find out soon if he's got this one right as well. The score currently in that match is goalless. Let's recap your top stories. A plane crashes outside Pretoria with 19 people on board. Confirmation of one fatality and multiple injuries this evening, including two people on the ground. ESCOM and the union still haven't been able to reach a wage agreement during the fourth round of talks. Missed anything? Remember, you can always catch up on our ETV channel on YouTube. That's it for me and the team. Do take care. Good night.